afternoon. Welcome to Bloomberg Quint, the top headlines of this hour. Markets raise early gains with both benchmark indices trading with marginal cuts. India week surges. And Indus Indian Bank is one of the top nifty losers after RBI imposed a three crore penalty for breaching income classification norms. The Supreme Court hikes iron ore mining cap in Karnataka from 30 to 35 million tons per annum. And WPI inflation hits an eight-month high. Wholesale prices rose 3.9% in November from 3.6% in October. And the second phase of polling kicks off in Gujarat with 93 out of 182 constituencies going to polls. Those are your top headlines. I'm Agam Akil. Up next is Hot Money with Darshan Nata. Thank you, Agam. Hello and welcome to Hot Money on Bloomberg Quint Live, India's first digital live streaming business news service. This is the show which gets you a complete wrap of all the stocks that are buzzing in trade. I'm Darshan Mehta. Let's start with an important note that has come out. Nomura has come out with a report that projects a reduction in FII ownership of the Nifty stocks compared to the year ago uh, and, and the last quarter. However, DIIs have increased their holdings in the Nifty over the last quarter. Yadin Mota is standing by with all the details on this report. Yadin, what do you have for us? Thanks for that, Darshan. Uh, clearly, Nomura has come out with a note, uh, you know, some analytics on how really the FII and DII ownership is really changing as far as Indian stocks are concerned. And if you look at the second quarter of FII 18, FII's uh, hold uh, close to, uh, you know, 25%, uh, uh, you know, in Indian companies compared to 12.3% as far as domestic funds are concerned. Uh, so clearly, you can see a pattern wherein probably uh, the exposure of FII is slightly reducing in Indian stocks to uh, you know, the domestic uh, institutional investors and DIIs clearly at this point in time have gradually picked up from a level of 11% to almost 12.3%. Uh, uh, so uh, the kind of inflows that we have seen in the domestic uh, institutional investor funds, uh, which has been increasing and the kind of trend that we have seen, which is basically FI selling into the Indian equities is now reflecting uh, in uh, this particular, uh, uh, you know, graph. As far as Nifty stocks are concerned and the kind of changes that we have seen uh, increase in FI holdings in the second quarter, uh, you know, Bharti Infratel, Bajaj Finance, Tech, Mahindra, Tata Steel and Hindalco. Uh, and look at these metal names as well as uh, the kind of exposure that have increased in telecom space. Uh, you know, FIs have gradually bought into Bharti Infratel, uh, Bajaj Finance, Tech, Mahindra. So these are the few stocks wherein FIs have increased their holdings. And remember Bharti Infratel, we had the promoters selling in their stake to uh, marquee investors because of which uh, there is a significant change in the holding quarter on quarter. Also, if you look at the new Nifty stocks wherein, uh, you know, we have seen a decrease in FIA holdings, clearly Infosys, uh, Lupin, Dr. Reddy, Sun Pharma. So the entire pharma pack and IT pack is wherein we have seen a significant shift as far as fund flows are concerned. And look at this Lupin, Dr. Reddy, Sun Pharma, a consistent decrease in FIA holdings. Uh, and, you know, that is clearly reflective of the underperformance that we have seen as far as uh, pharma stocks are concerned in the past few, uh, uh, you know, quarters. Uh, uh, rise in uh, domestic institutional uh, holding. NTPC Lupin Infosys, so clearly FIs came out of uh, Lupin and DIs bought it. Similar is the case with Infosys, wherein uh, you know FIs were selling, uh, and on the counter uh, we had uh, domestic institutional investors, which were buyers uh, in this particular counter. However, there are some deductions in DI holdings, wherein Tech Mahindra, Tata Motors, as Hindalco. These are the three stocks wherein uh, you know domestic uh, institutional investors uh, reduce uh, their holdings. Uh, not a, a very large change, but probably uh, 50 to 100 basis points is what we saw in terms of FII, DI ownership change. And this is the mid-cap ownership trend, uh, wherein again FII uh, holding is more or less stable on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. However, if you look at the domestic institutional investors on a year-on-year -year basis, we have seen uh, the domestic institutional investors increase their holding in mid-cap companies. And probably we have seen mid-caps also quite active uh, in, in the market for the last uh, few quarters or so. Stocks, again, uh, wherein FII holdings have risen uh, in the mid-cap space, uh, Interglobe Aviation, which is Indigo, RBL Bank, Indiabu Real Estate, Jubilee Food Works, Bata India. Uh, if you look at uh, the decrease of FII holdings, SW Energy, Bharat Financial, CSE. And remember, mind you, we have Bharat Financial and CSE, in fact, uh, outperform uh, the markets uh, despite the FII selling into the marketplace. Now, you know, we will see how DIs really have done as far as the mid cap end of the market uh, is concerned. Uh, so, we have Tata Global, Ajanta Pharma, IPCA, Interglobe Aviation, Bharat Financials, all of these stocks wherein we have seen. Uh, domestic institutional investors' participation increase. And uh, if you look at the fall in holdings, uh, clearly the PSU banking lot 
uh, is something wherein uh, there was under ownership on the DII side. So Union Bank, IDBI Bank, Bank of India, wherein we have seen significant cuts coming in as far as domestic institutional ownership is concerned. And with that recapitalization plan coming in, probably uh, most of the domestic institutional investors would be feeling left out. Uh, but this is how uh, broadly, uh, you know, the, really the sectoral and the stockwise trend panned out for FIIs and DIs in terms of holding on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis for the second quarter. Okay, many thanks for that, Yatin. Uh, we'll get back to hot money and let's welcome our experts on the show. Senthil Manikandan of uh, Newberry Capital and Yogesh Mehta of Motilal Oswal Security join us on the show. Thank you to both of you for joining us on the show. Today on Hot Money, we'll discuss stocks like HUL, Repco Home, Sun TV, Shri Cement and TVS Motors. The first stock that we'll talk about is the big one in the FMCG space, HUL. Trading near record highs, uh, is there more for the counter to go? We'll ask our guest. Uh, what about you, Yogesh? Uh, do you like HUL? Do you think that you know there is more growth opportunities or valuation is a concern for you? Because it's trading at almost 55 times next yeah. year, 50 times this next year. Uh, yeah, that's it. See, uh, it is quoting at the premium valuations and all-time high valuations right now. But uh, the thing is, post GST, the volume has again uh, come back to the normalization. Uh, normalize has come. Even the product prices post GST 20 to 18 percent, many of the personal and hygiene care mm. products have come down. But uh, they have even cut down the price of lotion per segment. Mm. If you talk about, then uh, they have cut down the prices. So profitability is not uh, getting uh, hampered there. Uh, volume growth is driving factor and plus high ROE, ROC is an all time high again and they are maintaining that stance and the heavy dividend payout. So putting all together in a defensive sector, we feel that the normalization on the pricing power has come down again back to the company and that will drive ongoing maybe 17 to 18 percent EPS CAGR over next uh, two to three years. Okay. Yeah, volume, uh, uh, the valuation is a concern, but uh, what I would suggest is, uh, though the upside is very 10 percent or 15 percent is limited from here, but in defensive stock, you have always uh, such kind of valuations and the upside is also limited. So I would suggest you can buy as a defensive one and if not, then buy on decline. So it's like a portfolio stock that it's you're a recommending. Portfolio stock, yeah. What about you, uh, Senthil, any view on HUL? So we are neutral on the stock, like you mentioned on the valuation side. Recently, there have been a lot of concerns about the HUL <coughs> losing their market share to the new entrants. Mm. But if you look at the product portfolio, there are 50 brands mm. and the company has been consistently generating free cash flow. Mm. And with this strong product portfolio and the brand, I think HUL has a considerable presence in the uh, home care segment and also mm. in the FMC. So I think they will be able to thwart the new competition coming in. Okay. And with uh, GST, uh, the tax rates has been reduced from 28% to 18%. Mm. So out of the HUL's portfolio, 40% of the portfolio comes in this 18% um, bracket. Mm. So that is also one positive. And second, uh, what you're saying is last two monsoons has been good and HUL's uh, out of the sales, 40% comes from the rural. Mm. So all these things put together is positive on the business side, but valuations like you mentioned, it's like uh, not attractive. Is not attractive. Okay, so that's the view that's coming in on HUL. Uh, both our guests uh, do indicate that you know growth is there, but uh, everything is working for the company. But but valuations uh, at uh, you know at uh, 55 times this year and almost uh, 48 times next year is something that is looking expensive. Yogesh believes that it's it's a portfolio stock, limited upside, but but the growth can continue. Let's move on to the next stock, and that is Repco Home. The counter has been buzzing over the past few days. Today also it's up. It's up almost close to 15% from the recent lows. Uh, is there more space for the company to grow? Uh, is this the best play in, in this space or are there other attractive opportunities in the space where this company exists? Uh, we'll ask our guest, uh, uh, Senthil, uh, what about Repco Home valuations at three times price to book? Uh, expensive or what do you make of Repco Home? So valuations, uh, if you see the last one of years, it has come from a price to book of 4, 4.5 to 3 mm. because of the concerns emanating from the Tamil Nadu. Mm. Actually, Tamil Nadu contributes 60% 60 per, 60 of their loan book. Sure. Uh, because if last one of years, if you see first, there was a concern over the uh, conversion of unwarranted pl plots of land in Chennai. Mm. Now it has been the ban on sa sand mining. Okay. So last round of years, because of this, their gross NPA, mm. which they maintain below 0.5 kind of range to 3.5%. Mm. So these concerns have resulted in the stock price declining from around 950 towards currently around 680 levels. Mm. So stock price has declined along with the concerns in the business. Mm. But if you look at the business phase, 60% comes from the unsalaried segment. It's the most lucrative segment currently and it is also growing at around 25-30%. Mm. 
and we have a good quality management plus with the sun salary segment contributing majority of the loan book we see long term prospects or better for this company okay so short term we may see some sort of volatility mm. emanating from the sand mining ban in tn but long term prospects of the company are looking good okay so you're positive on yes. this contract yes sir yogesh are these valid concerns and what is motilal oswal's recommendation on repco uh, i partially agree with senthil that yes uh, since last two years there were some headwinds for, there were many headwinds for this company like uh, sand mm. uh, uh, mining is a uh, ban and there is a uh, unapproved plots did not get uh, approval from the hmm. uh, madras high court so all these are now we feel that has been uh, factored into the price and ongoing when we spoke to the management they hinted that yes uh, uh, there are early stage of turn around where you know some of partial of the unapproved plots are get, plots are getting okay. uh, certified so that approval will be in place and uh, rest of the things on the cost of funding is uh, uh, now it is coming down hmm. so that is the advantage from ongoing I don't see it will be turn around from FI 18 onwards, but uh, still one year of a slower growth we are anticipating. It will take some more time. 255 is the book value for this financial year, and then next would be some 18 percent growth would be 295 to 300. So uh, on that, compared to peers, it is already quoting a discounted okay. level right now, and two and a half times is fairly decent one. But for sure, next uh, six months, nine months there will be no growth. Okay. So for FI 19 and 20, if you want to bet for a two and a half times price to book, hmm. then you will have a earning momentum will come, and you will again get some 15, 18 percent kind of a return of this uh, portfolio stock. Okay. So that's the consensus view that's coming in on repo home. Finance. Uh, both our guests believe that at least for the next uh, one or two or three quarters there will be pain, given the fact that there are issues as far as Tamil Nadu is concerned. The company, the counter is corrected significantly, but both our guests are indicating that post that, when you know, uh, when when things start turning around, this is a stock that you should bet on. So that's the view that's coming in on Repco Home. Let's talk about the next one, and that is uh, Sun TV. The counter in a very down market over the past few days has been buzzing. Today it's down in trade, but there seems to be a lot of traction that's coming in on the on the counter one of the best uh, ro return ratios in excess of 20% on roe roc as well as roa that's the return that is there valuations of 30 times and majority of the brokerages have a bullish recommendation i can see motilal oswal as a target price in excess of 1000 year uh, what what makes you bullish on uh, Sun TV. Uh, see, on the standalone revenue, it uh, in the second quarter it has grown by eight percent Y O Y. But however, the domestic revenue on the DTH and the digitization, digital cable uh, in Tamil Nadu has grown up by fourteen percent, which is good good enough. Now R O E and all are very much in place. Hmm. Uh, the only buzz is when management has hinted in their con call that uh, domestic revenue will uh, grow from nine nine and a half billion currently to twenty billion over next two three years. Hmm. So that sounds sounds some more positiveness. Plus, market share into Karnataka. taka and other state is also improved and they are now focusing into the third stage mm. uh, third state where it is not there okay. so uh, putting all together and the gender wise uh, uh, kannada and malayali and all are having a good traction okay. nandini is something where they are still working on it they have launched new channel in last 3 months but still trp needs to be seen ipl will have a stagnant effect there will no mm. more a sink of uh, downsizing there and uh, main revenue will come in digitization phase once the tamil nadu government says that uh, everything has to be on digitization okay. then the whole migration of arpu will go up by from current 75 rupees to 125 rupees over uh, next one uh, whenever it is announced one to one to two months okay. so that gives the edge towards that and still we believe at 1005 rupees price target which we are projecting still we are having a discounted to z at 25% okay so still we are very bullish on uh, digitization front first is there any concern as far as management is concerned because this this stock reacts widely to political news so uh, is that something that you are factoring in it does react to that but uh, as of now everything has been uh, priced in and we have factored into the report so which is unforeseen we don't know but that is a uh, that is the catch will remain always there okay it will remain there so so it's a bullish comment coming in on sun tv from yogesh uh, senthil what do you make of uh, sun tv so if you see sun tv they are the market leaders in the south and their flagship channel is uh, sun tv tamil hmm. recently what you are seeing is last one or two quarters we have seen the uh, z and then hmm. infringing their key flagship channel hmm. and also we have seen star and their channel star vijay hmm. with their uh, big boss program they have taken their market share which is like uh, sun tv's market share which was always around above 50% in the decade hmm. came below that 50% range and also but uh, what we feel is that still they have the moat to survive hmm. because they have been a strong free cash flow generation 
generate more than 1000 crores and okay. they are net cash positive mm. strong balance sheet so they will be able to spend mm. second on the digital ways sun next so okay. with this strong balance sheet they will be able to spend and then gone to the additional market share okay so we remain uh, positive on the business side mm. but valuations are not comfortable because if you see in the past 5 years valuation gap between z and sun has narrowed mm. it used to be traded sun used to be traded at 40% discount to z mm. currently it's trading at around 20% mm. z being a pan india pair mm. warrants uh, premium to sun okay so we are neutral on the stock considering the valuations okay considering uh, that you are from chennai what's the ground situation to actually people see a lot of, i just want to get a sense of on, on the ground situation do actually people watch a lot of sun tv or is there much more competition on that market clearly uh, sun is the number one channel till now okay and uh, especially in the rural areas sun with their uh, tv soaps was hmm. the number one even though star vijay has made inroads in the last couple of years hmm. but their tv soaps was the number one okay second uh, like you mentioned there is some political affiliation of sun tv with yes. the opposition party yes. current uh, political situation is in favor of uh, the opposition party hmm. so this could also be in favor of sun tv in coming years okay so that's the view that's coming in on uh, sun tv uh, yogesh believes that there is uh, Uh, he is bullish on it. Motila Loswal has a target price in excess of thousand for Sun TV. Senthil is saying he likes the business model, but valuations at this point of time is a concern because the valuation gap to Z has narrowed significantly. So before we move on to the other stocks, uh, here's a quick recap of all the guest views on the stocks that we've covered till now. Okay, the next stock that we'll talk about is the Shree Cement. Uh, news coming out uh, yesterday indicating the fact that you know uh, now there is a relief as far as use of pet coke uh, for raw material for some of the cement companies are concerned. Sun TV uh, for Shree Cement had a big drop when this news was announced earlier when the ban came in. Yesterday the counter did rally significantly post this ban being lifted. Uh, what's the way ahead for uh, uh, for Shree Cement valuations? No doubt on the expensive side, 41 times this year, 31 times next year. but uh, what would you make of it uh, senthil shree cement or some some other player in the cement space so if you look at the cement industry mm. uh, they have been uh, going through rough winds in the last uh, decade mm. but currently their capacity utilization as industry is 65% okay. it's a decade low mm. going forward from fy18 what we are expecting is the incremental demand will outstrip the incremental capacity that is coming in so it's positive for all the cement players okay and with street cement what you are seeing is last 5 years if you see they have quadrupled their capacity mm. so and if you look at their balance sheet they have been net positive in cash so strong balance sheet and then the if you see consistent build up in capacity mm. and roe upwards of 25% these are the positives for the company and if you look at the cost wise cement being a commodity it's always the lowest cost producer that gets mm. the market share yes Sri Cement with its EBITDA pattern is upwards of thousand under rupees. Mm. This is one of the highest in the market. Yes. Because of their power cost, their power and fuel cost is six fifty rupees mm. versus the industry average of around nine eighty rupees. Okay. Uh, this is because of hundred percent usage of pet coke. Yes. Uh, clearly, with this ban on pet coke mm. lifting up, mm. it's positive for the Sri Cement. and we have a good quality management so that warrants a premium to the other industry players so we are bullish on the sri cement okay so it's a bullish call coming in uh, yogesh uh, is valuation is a concern or they deserve that uh, valuation premium because of, of some some of the factors that uh, he's been saying and that's been spoken about in the brokerage reports across so what do you make of sri cement uh, see valuations are high but the way they have performed over last uh, say 5 7 years we have seen from fy 13 to 16 they've increased their capacity from 13 million down to 20 1 million ton even now they are adding more and they are planning for fy18 it will be 20 billion uh, rupee of a capex in this they are adding 6 and a half million ton of grinding units in bihar and rajasthan uh, they are having a clinker unit in chatisgarh so that will be commenced by march 2018 apart from that uh, they are always looking for uh, brownfield expansion wherever it's possible now petco which has recently came out uh, th- that was a big drag mm-hmm. for them and now it is now boon for them again after yesterday's decision so uh, we don't foresee that any knee jerk reaction there again in this kind of a company and uh, re-rating we have seen in 13 to 7 fy 13 to 6 
16 and 17 it will not be up to that great level but of course it will have a good impact over uh, uh, next two to three years on adding our capacity and uh, we are valuing at uh, say $100 to $200 it has already gone up USD per ton and we'll maintain that capacity so we believe that 15 and a half times EV2 EBITDA level on a valuation front we are comfortable on that and we believe that yes upside is still there about uh, uh, 17 18 upside is still there from current level of the investment perspective okay so again a consensus bullish target that's coming in on Sri Cement Sri Cement no doubt is one of the best run uh, cement companies uh, in the country as per our guest and valuation according to Yogesh at this point in time is fair and coming to the last stock and that is uh, TVS Motors uh, recently they launched the Apache bike uh, uh, they have their upcoming partnership with BMW which will also roll out uh, bikes but valuations at 46 times one of the most expensive uh, two-wheeler company on, on this year basis and 35 times uh, next year basis. Uh, what should one make of it, Yogesh? Are you a biker? Uh, no, not a four-wheeler. No. <laughs> okay. Which four-wheeler do you prefer? <laughs> right now, I'm not into the Indian uh, manufacturing company, but Maruti is the one which I prefer. Okay, most. so on TVS? <laughs> on the TVS, uh, we believe that yes, it's a great story, and uh, I am uh, following this company since 2013 when it was uh, 60, 90 rupees. What I believe is yes, uh, second quarter volume growth was decent enough, and uh, somewhere around 850,000, 850,000 units were there. Mm. And uh, now uh, BMW Alliance will have. Uh, had uh, 2,000 units per month, <laughs> which will gradually inch up to uh, two and a half uh, to 2.6 uh, 2.6 uh, hundred. Uh, in March 2018. Mm. What we believe is management has guided for double digit growth. So far they have guided not mm. uh, come across and not reality but they are guided this time. Okay. Uh, whatever the RM cost, raw material cost has uh, gone up. They were uh, successfully passed on to that. They've raised uh, uh, they've uh, risen the price of 250 to 500 rupees per uh, model. So uh, they are uh, working on that. Secondly, uh, new launches are lined up in terms of uh, scooters, mm. gearless scooters. Then there's a bike, there's Apache, mm. uh, GBR, G10. All these are lined up for the new launches. What we believe is these all are having a good impact over uh, next uh, two years and one to two years of course yes and they are competing to now uh, Bajaj kind of uh, bikes. We believe strongly that uh, yes uh, this can perform very well over next two years but at the valuation concern as you said we are a uh, little cautious on that point in time because uh, even if we consider FI uh, valuations are 27 times FI 19 and 22 times FI 20, but still a lot more to go. So we are neutral stands on that TBS motor at this point. Okay, neutral stands. What about you? What do you make of uh, TBS motors? Are valuations justified or would you shift to some other bike? First, we look at the wealth creators in the two-wheeler space, either it be Bajaj or Royal Enfield. They created the segment which by way of new products. Mm. Bajaj introduced the sports segment by a pulser. Mm. Royal Enfield entered the mid-size. It yes. created the segment. So. Once a company creates a segment, there is a huge amount of value cre wealth creation over there. Okay. If you look at TVS, they are not a, a segment creation mm. company. Like they are presence in two wheelers, three wheelers, mm. and within the two wheelers, they are also into scooters. Okay. So there is an assortment of uh, products within the company. Okay. Uh, we are positive on the BMW partnership, which mm. enables the company to enter the uh, mid-size segment. Sure. But like as you mentioned, the valuations are not attractive. And if you look at their operating margins are the lowest in the mm. industry. But management expects to clock in around uh, double digit margins in the coming years. But valuations are already factoring in the positives. Okay. So we are uh, currently not positive in the company. Okay. Are you a biker by any chance? No. You are the, I think all three of us are non-bikers. <laughs> but uh, all three non-bikers indicating the fact that uh, TVS Motors at this point of time, neutral stance uh, by Yogesh uh, and uh, it's it's a bearish stance that coming in from Senthil on uh, TVS Motors. Before we wrap up on the show, here's a quick recap of all the guest views on the stocks that we've covered till now. Okay, Senthil, Yogesh, thank you so much for uh, joining me on the show. With that, it's a wrap on today's Hot Money. Ask BQ comes up next. Stay tuned to Bloomberg Quiz.